I tested eight speakers under £10,000 and these were what I decided to get, but I may have already found an issue with them. Hi, I'm Ed Thorne. It's good to see you. So if you've been following the channel recently, you'll know that I decided my old Neumann speakers weren't working for me. And after hearing some high-end speakers at GearFest UK in July, I decided I wanted to upgrade my speakers. Then I had to decide what I could spend, which quickly became a matter of what I was willing to spend. Now, initially, I had set a budget which was considerably less than these. But the problem is, once you've heard really high quality speakers, you just can't unhear them. And I made the mistake of auditioning these speakers first, which set the benchmark very high and basically ruined it for everything else. So then the decision came down to whether I want to make a short term temporary upgrade with a view to upgrading again later, or make a lifetime legacy purchase now. So what were the requirements for my speakers? I wanted a three-way speaker that could later be expanded to a four-way system with additional branded subwoofers. I wanted maximum dispersion for a wide listening area, impeccable stereo imaging and detail, and a flat frequency response. This all sounds obvious, of course. But also, practically speaking, I don't have space to fit speakers behind my desk on stands, so I also needed something I could use in a horizontal orientation on my desk. Now, what I didn't know I wanted was what I heard immediately upon hearing these speakers, which again set the benchmark of comparison for all the other models I tried. These speakers offer the most natural sound I've ever heard. They highlight the subtle nuances of compression and harmonic enhancements more than any other speaker. They deliver the deepest soundscape that I've ever heard. They deliver the most expansive, spacious and airy top end I've ever heard and the richest, thickest bass sound I've ever heard. Now, with regards to the mid-range, I naturally lean towards a smiley face EQ on my mixers. And there are speakers that deliver a more forward mid-range than these, but I felt this would further encourage me to push the low and top end. So what I needed is a speaker that encourages me to push the mid-range. Now, I wouldn't describe these speakers as mid-range forward, but the detail and accuracy of the mid-range reproduction just can't be beaten. So this speaker better suits my mixing style. And lastly, I wasn't fussed about DSP control, and it was these speakers that really highlighted the full benefits of full analog circuitry. I learned a lot during the speaker testing process. Firstly, you won't truly understand or hear what you're missing from your current speakers until you do a side-by-side -side comparison against a more expensive speaker. Now, I specifically say expensive rather than better because better is subjective and expensive is, quite frankly, realistic. The amount of times I've been told, buy such and such £3,000 speaker on my videos, and I'm there thinking, how? How can a speaker costing a third of the price compete with £9,000 speakers? It's simple. They can't, but you won't know that until you A, B the two. I learned the importance of acoustic isolation. I extensively tested the isoacoustic pucks and stands. The critical detail here is that they have to be load-bearing enough for your speakers. There's a all speaker pads supplied with my desk house the isoacoustic mini pucks, but these can't support the weight of three-way speakers to be effective. The standard pucks and stands can, and I chose the stands because there's a six-way contact system minimizing the vibration through each leg. You can literally feel the difference in vibrations between four pucks and the six stand legs. The result is a noticeably clearer low mid-range. Try the isoacoustic pucks or stands with any speaker and you'll probably double the perceived sound quality of your speakers. Now, in the introduction, I suggested I'd found a problem with these speakers. Well, I did, but the good news is it's a very good problem to have. The thing is, these speakers are so detailed compared to the Neumanns, on which I struggled to hear compression and saturation properly. It's actually been tempting to over-mix on these because you just hear everything. The best example I can give you is the THD setting on my Wes Audio Rayer, 
which is a wonderful sounding very mu compressor with a big fat tube inside that I use primarily on my guitar bus. The harmonic circuits, medium and high, are set to 1 and 3% total harmonic distortion respectively. On the Neumanns, I could just about hear the difference at 3%, but on these, 1% is loads and 3% is like, whoa, he's up turbo, let's use you with caution. Right, the big reveal, the bit you've been waiting for, drum roll please. Before we do that, check out the Working Audio Tools podcast with Paul Third, where we interview industry professionals and compare and critique each other's mixes whilst documenting our journeys to becoming full-time mix engineers. Yes, I bought the PSI Audio A23Ms. The PSI A23Ms are all analog Swiss-made speakers with proprietary made neodymium tweeters and mid-range drivers. Hosting class GH amplifiers for the bass and class AB drivers for the mid-range and the tweeters, the crossover points are 620Hz and 3.2kHz. The front ported cabinet boasts a frequency range from 34Hz to 23kHz at minus 6dB, extending to 30Hz at minus 10dB. Each speaker is individually calibrated in Switzerland in an anechoic chamber and a frequency response chart is provided. The PSI speaker drivers host adaptive output impedance circuits to counteract the effects of driver materials resonating, which can lead to colouring and distortion of the sound. The adaptive output impedance constantly monitors the driver's movement and feeds this information back into the amplifier, modifying its output impedance. The result is an exceptionally clear and precise sound without any coloration. Now, one of the most important aspects of speaker accuracy and stereo imaging placement is the phase alignment and coherence. In other words, the time at which all the frequency range reaches your ear. Most speakers utilize DSP to phase align these signals, but this involves additional stages of A to D and D to A conversion, introducing latency and possible signal degradation. PSI speakers employ compensated phase response technology utilizing all-pass filters to compensate for the delayed delivery of the low frequencies that often occurs in speakers. The result of CPR is an incredibly accurate sonic image, making sound source location in the stereo field and depth of the mix easily identifiable. The precision in the transient reproduction is unbelievable, bringing life, dynamics and clarity to the smallest of details especially things like reverb and delay tails. So there's nothing really else to say. I tested nearly every speaker available under £10,000 and these speakers consistently came out on top. They are just phenomenal speakers and you really have to hear them for yourself to believe just how good they are. A big thank you to Paul Mortimer at Emerging UK for supplying these for me. I've been Ed Dawn. It's been emotional. Check out the Working Audio Tools podcast and I'll see you on the next one. And I'm already thinking I might need some subwoofers. (laughs) 